Deuteronomy chapter 22. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray. So if you start seeing your neighbor's animals start fleeing away, they're at a fence and they're, they're, they're going to knock the fence, fence down. They're walking off. You're to stop them and hide thyself from them. And what that means right there is you see the event is happening. Don't hide yourself. Don't stop and look the other way. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother or brother. So his sheep have wandered off. You're to bring them back. His, his ass goes off. You're to bring it back. His ox. Hey, hey here he is. Uh, he got out over there. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not. So here's something that you found. This is what you call uh, lost and found. You found something. It's not yours. You don't know who owns it. And when I grew up as a kid, it used to be finders, keepers, lose your weepers. Little did we know that that is anti-scriptural. Because look what it says. If thy brother be not nigh unto thee, he's not home, he's nowhere, he's gone on a journey, whatever reason. Or if thou know him not, you don't know who owns it. Thou shalt bring it into thy own house, whatever it is. Whether it's an animal or a thing. It shall be with thee unto thy brother seek after it. And thou shalt restore it to him again. Comes around, the guy, hey, listen, I'm looking for this thing. I lost it. I was on this road. I was in this area. My cow is gone. If you got it, you can't say, well, I found it. And it's been 10 days. And it's mine now. The Bible says it doesn't even give a time frame. It says, if he comes looking and it's his, you're to give it. You're not to lie about it. In like manner shalt thou do with his ass. It's a live, living thing. And thou shalt do, and so shalt thou do with his raiment. You find his coat, his hat. As long as he's going, looking at the ass there, you're going to have to feed that ass. You're going to have to take care of that ass until the guy comes. And with all lost things of thy brothers, whether it be living, whether it be a coat, whatever it be, if he comes looking for it, you give it to him, which he has lost. And thou shalt, and thou hast found, yeah, try it again. And thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise. Thou mayest not hide thyself. May not hide the item. It's not yours. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way and hide thyself from him, them. So, and we see in, in Samuel with David that the ox stumbled. And oxen can stumble and they can fall down under a load. You're not to look the other way. And we see this when Jesus gave the parable of the, the man that was beat up among the thieves. We call it the, the Good Samaritan. When the Levite and the priest came, they went on the other side of the road. They violated the scriptures. Here's a guy that's in need. And they went the other way. And the Samaritan, the bad guy, helped out. And hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. So the guy's got trouble with his camel. The guy's got trouble with his animal. Something spilled over the road. The cart broke. You're to help him. It's unity. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Has anybody ever heard that one be quoted to you? I'm only going to make one comment about that. We'll move on to verse 6. In the Old Testament, the Bible speaks about the men wearing the skirts. When Jesus sent out his disciples... The, the last time, he told them to have their purses. That's all I'm going to say. If a bird's nest chanced to be before thee in the way, in a tree or on the ground, 
So you're walking down the road, you're you're on your animal going down the road, and there's a bird's nest, whether it be in the road or it's in the tree. Whether it be young ones, chicks, or eggs. And the dam's sitting upon the young or upon the eggs. So here's a mother and her eggs or her young. Thou shalt not take the dam with the young. And we see this also illustration when we looked in the law about a, a young animal and his mother's milk. You're not to boil that calf or that animal in his mother's milk. And we see here, it's not milk, but it's the eggs or the mother. But thou shalt in any wise let the dam go. And take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee. Now why? Well, that mother bird, that hen is able to produce most likely other eggs, other chicks. It's ready. So, if we were to go by the laws, some people do, when you buy eggs, and then you could be eating the same chicken with the eggs. And that thou mayest prolong thy days. Well, look at that. Here's one of those things in the law that if you do it, you'll get longer life. <laughs> Can you imagine such a thing? Why did that guy die early? Because he had a, a dam and her eggs together. How strict the law is. When thou buildest a new house, here's another law, then thou shalt make a battlement. And this is the fence that goes around the house. For thy roof. That thou bring not blood upon thy house if any man fall from thence. So, if you're witnessing to a Jew and he keeps the law, and now remind you, a Jew, I've done this. You kept the whole law? Yes, I have. Do you have a house? Oh, yeah. Do you have a battlement for your house? The guy didn't have no idea what I was talking about. Do you have a fence around your house? So if anybody gets on your roof, if they fall, the, the fence will prevent them. Well, no. The law says you're supposed to have it. Now, you see this in Acts chapter 10 when Peter goes up to the housetop. You read it in the Old Testament. They're on the housetop. The house there had some kind of flat roof that you could go up there and do things. We just read in, the, in, in uh, uh, Joshua where Rahab kept the men in the roof with the flocks and the hay and all that. It was a storage area. And this is for protection. This is for liability that no one falls and you get charged with murder. And you'll have to go run off to the city's refuge and leave your new house. Which we already read already that in the sign of a, of, a, of a battle in the army, if you built a new house, you are excused from service to go and join your new house and dedicate it. Well, I hate to dedicate a new house and have somebody fall flat, die, and then the avenger of blood, you're innocent. Now you got to leave that house, go to the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. So, Here's a law. Protection. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Now, the vineyard in the Bible, Matthew 13, is a type of Israel. And you can't or shouldn't put Israel mixed with other nations. And the God calls those other nations, calls them strangers. Least the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown. All right, so you do go ahead and mix seed. And the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Now, it's not an abomination, verse 5, but it can be defiled. And what happens? Those other seeds, those other plants can affect the flavor and the taste and the wine of your vineyard. God says one crop. Now, aren't you glad you are under grace? If you have a home garden. Because if we were under the law. As. Churches will have you to be. Seven day Adventists. 
And if you were to have a garden of tomatoes, cucumbers, beets, radishes, and blah, 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 you are defiled your, your garden. <laughs> These are regulations not for the church age. The Jews were to be a particular people. And when the, when the Gentiles would come through the land, they would look in the yard and say, that's only one crop in that garden, that's it. They don't wear cotton. They don't wear cotton and polyester together. They were to be a people that were to be estranged and separated and divided among other people. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and with an ass together. And I am told all kinds of aspects of these two. They don't work together. And I forget that if it's the ox that the ass smell bothers the ox, or if it's the ass that the smell of the ox bothers it. But one of these animals is bothered by the smell of the other animal. So don't do it together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts. And there's your polyester and your cotton together. As woolen and linen together. You can't mix your clothes as a Jew. Now, 99.99% .99 of the population of America, if we were under the law, would violate 2211. Just look at the, the, claw, the tag on the back of your shirt. Never mind anything else. Aren't you glad you're under, the, under grace and not the law? Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four corners of thy vesture, wherewith thou Coverest thyself. Coverest is the first time there. And he's talking about your clothes. Cover up clothes. Now, have you ever seen a seven-day Adventist ever wearing fringes on their garments? And yet they follow the law, and here's the law says, the fringes. Well, why is that? You're a Jew. You're the people of that God. You're weird. You dress weird. And the fact is, to be, if you are looking for God, if you are searching truly for God, you would know what people to go to by their dress. And that's where the Roman Catholic Church comes out with their little shirts and their little collar to look at us. But there's nothing in the grace of God of the church age epistles telling us to dress different from the world, except for we have clothes on rather than take clothes off. Were to be plain dressed, modest. If any man take a wife, paragraph, and go in unto her and hate her, no reason, and give occasion of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. All right, now this is not just the old lady, the battle axe, blah, 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 as I've heard Christian men describe their wives. Here's a man that not only does he hate her, but he's charging her with premarital sex with other men besides him. Then shall the father of the damsel, notice damsel and maid, and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity. The damsel and maid are virgins. Unto the elders of the city and the gate. Now here we are. We're back at the gate. We're back where the leaders are. We're back where all government happens. This guy says, I hate my wife. And she's been unfaithful before we were married. Her parents, his in-laws, will go to the gate and say, here. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, not only he hates her, he has given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, virgin, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. There's the medical proof. My daughter was a virgin. 
Now, what this husband is doing is not only has he put a bad name on his do his wife, but he's also put a bad name on her father's household. This guy is producing women who are not faithful. And what we read the other night was if a child is not obedient to their parents, they're to be stoned. So here's the medical proof. The guy's a liar. And the elders of that city shall take the man and chastise him. Whip him. With whips. That teach you to lie about your wife. That would teach you to lie about her family. I guarantee you won't do it again. And they shall immense as penalty. That's the first and last time that shows up. It's a penalty. So not only is he whipped, but he's a penalty immense him in a hundred shekels of silver. It's going to cost him out of his wallet, and it's going to cost him pain and suffering for his lie. See what God says about lies? Husbands, you better be very careful in what you say about your wife. Ooh. Husbands, you better be careful what you say about your wives. Glad we're not under the law, I guess. And give them unto the father of the damsel. You ruined his name. Because he has brought a, an evil name upon, the, upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. Ooh. He loses out the money, his back is whipped, and you can't get rid of that woman. Now, we've already read in the law a couple days ago, if any man hate the woman, he can give her a bill of divorcement and say bye. He didn't need to do all this lying. But it's a shame for a divorce... So I'll just make the woman look bad. It became more of a shame by his lies. But if this thing be true, what the husband is saying is true. All right, let, okay. He can lie. Let's say if it's true. And the tokens of the virginity be not found for the damsel. Now this is a, a great honor upon the father he needs to keep. He can't lose. Because if he lost, let's say he just lost it and there's no proof. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. And the men of this and the men of her city. Now remember what Harry said with the child, this you shall bring the child to the gate, and of his city. Of her city shall stone her with stones that she die. Boy, what would you do with the high school system today in Planned Parenthood if the doors were caught premarital sex? Stone with stones that she died because she has wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. Well, God's calling her a whore. Well, I hate to be the father that just lost it or didn't keep it, the tokens. In her father's house, so shalt thou put evil away from among you. Capital punishment is to deter crime. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they sh shall both of them die. Where did you see the story of this one? John chapter 8, verse 5. We brought this woman taken in adultery. Both the man that lie with the woman and the woman, shall sh so shall thou put away evil from Israel. Well, when they brought her to Jesus, the only one they brought was a woman and she was caught in the act. Where is the man? Violation of the scriptures, violation of the law. Do you see, they were not doing what the law told them to do in Jesus' time. If the damsel that is a virgin be betrothed, she like Mary, 
She was a virgin, and she had a husband. Unto an husband, and a man find her in the city, and lie with her. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of the city, that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not being in the city, and the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife, <coughs> so thou shalt put away evil from among you. Now, here's a classification of a rape. And the classification of this, she didn't scream. And we just read about the law of brotherhood. You're to help your brother if he's got a problem with his ox, if he lost something. And the fact is, what we learn here, if a woman is to be overcome by a man... All she needs to do is scream or cry or holler, and it's the duty of her brethren in Israel to come to her aid. It is ridiculous that when you read that you have to tell your wife and daughter that if you are going to be, if they are in the process of raping you, they tell you to scream fire or I'm being robbed. Because people will come more to see a fire than help someone who's being raped. And that's not scriptural either. It's a city. Anybody and all the people should be able to hear her and run to her aid. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, not the city, and the man forced her, raped, and he and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. When a woman has been raped, she has not sinned. For as when the man rises against his neighbor and slays him, even so is this manner. The man is guilty, not the woman. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. In the city, if she cried, anybody would hurt her. If she's out in the farmstead, out in the valley somewhere, and this man approaches her and she screams, there's no one there. And listen, she's going to have enough guilt of her own self. Don't chastise her more. Afflict the guy that attacked her. Then the man that lied with her shall give unto the damsel's father you know, here's, here's a giving of money 50 shekels of silver now the man that lied about his wife had to give 100 shekels of silver in this case it's 50 shekels unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he has humbled her he may not put her away all his days. So, we got a rape in the city. She don't cry out. Both guilty. She should have cried. And she didn't cry out. It didn't really look like a rape. You find a woman that's in a field. She cries out. No one hears her. Now the man that lieth with her shall give her damsel's father fifty. It looks like it's not a rape if they just two come together. And God says that's a marriage. You give her father money. And she is your wife. He may not put her away all his days. There is no divorce ever granted to this, these two that just come together. She's not married. She's not betrothed. She's single. And then they two come together. That's a marriage. Flesh joining flesh is marriage. And then we close with verse 30. This is with Reuben. And a man shall not take his father's wife. You also find that in the Corinthian church. Nor discover his father's skirt. <laughs> father's what? What's that say? Well, let's take the let's take the last verse. Of this chapter, run over here where a man not should wear what pertains to a woman, and a woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. It's an abomination. And this verse concludes, which you never quote, a father's skirt, a man wearing a skirt. To see your father's wife 
is an abomination. And you would think that would be proper and ill. But when you run over to the Corinthians, and Paul tells us exactly that is going on in the Corinthian church. And the Corinthian church is like, ooh, ah. And Paul has to rebuke them. 